I will give you three times as much so that you will get rid of the old to bring in more of the new. So as I look at these different timelines, I'm saying, okay, Father, this is what you're saying. 7,000 years or 6,000 years, you're going to sow into the nations, into the earth. You're going to seed from the tree of life into the earth for 6,000 years. And on the sixth year, the 6,000th year, you're going to return and you're going to bring in the harvest. That's 6,000 years. What's left? A thousand years. Millennial reign. And then after that, Lucifer, Satan, will be loosed again for a short time. The seven trumpets. All of this is right there in the seven trumpets. How it all how it's all gonna play out. Amen. Two sticks, two names. Ezekiel 37, 16 and 18. 16 through 18. And you, son of man, take a stick for yourself and write on it for Yehuda and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write on it for Yosef, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. Then bring them together for yourself into one stick, and they shall become one in, my, in your hand. And when the children of your people speak to you, saying... Won't you show us what you mean by these? At this point, it is what? 2011. There's a seven year period. Jeremiah 30, verse, I think it's verse 7. It speaks of Israel being snatched out of the nations. And it is the time of Jacob's troubles. And it is a seven year period. The earth is going to go into darkness. We're going to see Yeshua coming in the clouds. All of these things is prophesied to happen in a seven year period. 1 Thessalonians 5 uh, 3 tells us midway, sudden destruction. So all of this is working in that point. This is what we see is going on now. Egypt back in the headlines. Mm -hmm. Fish are dying, <coughs> birds are dying. When they were they created? They were created on the, the fifth day. Okay. Why did he choose of the fifth day to start us out with all of this? It's signs and wonders. The disease, signs and wonders. Slavery, signs and wonders. That's what all this is about. So we will see the signs and start wondering enough to start studying it out. Peace. Peace. Hammer. This was not to harm us. That's right. But to bring us into submission to his righteousness right. so that we would know and fear him. That's right. Because we have lost the peace. Yeah, right. Okay, let's go. I, oh, let's Two sticks, two names. Israel, the dry bones are now becoming Israel. Israel is Judah and Ephraim because they're the two larger ones. So we have two sticks. And he says, right on one for Yehuda or Judah. And the children of Israel and his companions, that's one stick. He said, another one for Joseph, a stick of Ephraim and the house of Israel. Then bring them together for yourself in one stick. So they are coming together. And they shall become one in your hand. So this is what he was to do to go before them. This is Ezekiel to go before them. They were in captivity and he was to show them these signs so that when they asked he to explain it to them. And today we get to read about it. But also today we are also seeing Judah and Ephraim 
are starting to head back toward each other. Mm -hmm. In other words, our Jewish brothers, the synagogue, and the church. They must become one. Amen. Amen. It has to happen. Amen. Yeshua, our kinsman redeemer, Ezekiel 37, 22 through 24. And I shall make them one nation in the land, on the mountains of Israel, and one sovereign shall be sovereign over them all. And let them no longer be two nations, and let them no longer be divided into two reigns. And they shall no longer defile themselves with their idols, nor with their disgusting matters, nor with any of their transgressions. And I shall save them from all their dwelling places in which they have sinned. And I shall cleanse them, and they shall be my people, and I be their Elohim. Amen. While David, my servant, is sovereign over them, and they shall all have one shepherd, and walk in my right rulings, and guard my laws, and shall do them. Let's look at this prophecy. The two reigns, they have to come become one. The nations of the land and one sovereign. And you hear the name David called. That's because he's connecting us to the king. The lineage of David shall, uh, the scepter shall never depart from the lineage of David. So this is why we hear that connection. And then I'm going to save them both. And they no longer shall walk in their disgusting matters. So what we have is the synagogue who lived by the law and the church who lived by Yeshua, the blood. But they both came through the blood because when they came out of Egypt, they had to put the blood of the lamb on the doorposts. And today we live by the blood of the lamb that was slain. So the common theme here is going to come together because it says about the slave who gets a wife. He mm. says if he comes in without a wife, there you go. He can leave without a wife. But if the master has given him a wife, hallelujah, and he decides that he doesn't want to leave, hallelujah. let him take him to the doorpost mm. and put an arm through his ear at the doorpost. Mm. What was on the doorpost? It was the blood of the lamb. So the slave now becomes, his blood is now mingled with the blood of Passover because he doesn't want to leave his master. I love my master and I also love my wife. So he gets to stay, but if he decides he want to leave, if he came in by himself, and if he want to leave, he has to leave by himself. Hallelujah. Because the master gave him <laughs> Yeah, you don't the get wife. to take <laughs> You don't get to See, take See, there's a lot of laws that are working here <laughs> that they live by that that connection comes <laughs> now that once Hallelujah. we who love Yeshua, we can see the connections. That's it. So this is why I study the way I do. Because I first came into this under the blood of Yeshua. And now as I see the law, the two are becoming one in me. Yes, amen. And I make the connection. Hallelujah. Right. And this is where we all will be. Can you see them now coming into Yeshua? Mm -hmm. And what awesome they will be when they really see. Let me say, tell you this part. At a Jewish wedding, when the groom takes the wife and they have done the ceremony and they're celebrating and they're all together and they're singing and dancing and everything, they take the bridegroom, they take the husband, and they put him and the son in chairs. And they lift them up. And they just parade around and sing and dance, lifting up the father and the son. Yeshua said, if I be lifted. I will draw all the men unto me. See, when they get this revelation, that's right. it's going to be on. I'm telling you. So, now that we see the, the king is coming back to reign, we who rejected the law 
will now have to receive the law. Because it says here, while David my servant is sovereign over them, king, and they shall all have one shepherd yes, and walk in my right rulings, my laws, and guard my laws, not just walk in them, but they shall do them. Amen. How long have we been taught that we're no longer <coughs> under the law? But that's without understanding that in Re uh, Romans 8 and 2, it's talking about the law of sin and death. Yeah. You sin, you die. That's we don't stone anymore. Come on. Since Yeshua was crucified. When he rose, that was done away with. Come on. But we are still to love our wives. That's right. We are still to have no other God. That's right. We are still to honor our parents. That's right. That's right. And there's even more with that. <laughs> if your parents are walking in the Torah or the laws of God, you walk as them. That's but right. if they're not, then you return to me, I'll return unto you. Oh. There's so much more. So but let me just go on. Let's go. The third temple, Ezekiel 37, 25 through 28. And they shall dwell in a land that I have given to Yaakov, my servant, where your fathers dwell, and they shall dwell in it, they said, and their children, and their children's children forever. And my servant David be their prince forever and I shall make a covenant of peace with them an everlasting covenant it is with them and I shall place them and increase them and shall place my set apart place in their midst forever and my dwelling place shall be over them and I shall be their Elohim and they shall be my people and the Gentiles shall know that I Yahweh am setting Israel apart when my set apart place is in their midst forever. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a man, I may have spelled it wrong, but Phineas Apicus, who was the uh, grandson of Aaron. Uh, the third temple, some in Israel, they, they, they would call it uh, Temple of Ezekiel, because it is the prophecy. Um, in Ezekiel that tells us about the third temple and many more places but it's very prevalent here and we see where Yeshua himself well this says be their prince forever so there's going to be someone from the lineage of David who will actually be Yeshua Jesus because who can live forever he already he already he passed the sentence, which was to die, because he came as man. And all men have to die. How many times? 